I did. I wasn't a very good reader. I remember actually struggling with literacy when I was little. Um, but once I could read and being read to, I still remember being read to mm. grade one and grade three, even year seven, like going to high school where we would read. Um, Oh, um, the Enchanted Woods, so, you know, the Magic Faraway Tree. I loved that. I still remember being read that. And um, Year 7 was playing Beady Bo. Um, oh, yes. My teacher reading that and, yeah, just, just anything. <laughs> I liked her. I liked the, whim the whimsicalness of it all. Like, I just, yeah, and just that it was, I think, going from primary school to high school too, that it was a new genre. It was a new way of... of seeing the world. Yeah, mm, it was great. Yeah. It's more about what's going on in my life, really. All, both the two books that I've published so far um, are sort of reflections. So No More Kisses is, was, came about from my son who just got to a point where he didn't want to kiss Pa anymore because of the prickly um, moustache and when his hair was growing. Um, and in it, the aunties that smell, I remember my niece and nephew, I could tell where my sister had been that day because I could, I could smell my aunties' perfumes on them. I knew who'd held them and, and who'd kissed them. Um, so yeah, so it's always a little bit about what's going on in my life and then how it can um, be a part of the grown-up because everyone that's reading the books to the children are generally grown-ups as well. So we want them to be able to react to it and um, connect with it. and you know, have a conversation about it, really. Yeah. Yeah, and um, tummy holes came from my, pretty much my own um, memory of my dad, the girls, my sisters and I, um, he used to always have stuff in his belly button and he used to put things in there and we used to think it was just magical. So generally, yeah, what's happen happening or happened and then how I can make it relate to um, the children that are being read to or the, p the parents or the adults that are reading the book to them. It depends. So I've written, I've got a few more books at home, well, stories that I've written that I'm still editing and stuff. It just depends on the actual story. So No More Kisses was, was from Go To Woe. I had, the, I had the full story in my head. I had the main character. I had the problem, the solution. I even had the fact that I didn't want words at, towards the end where he falls over. And I really wanted the children to be able to look at the, I wanted the pictures to tell the story and for them to feel that emotion by just watching and then thinking, well, what might make him feel better? Um, but it, it is sometimes, I know um, with tummy holes, we had to do a little bit more editing. So the editing process with my editor was much more involved um, with tummy holes just because we had to really look at the words and, um, make sure we were using the right words, especially considering we're turning things over, we're lifting things up. We really wanted to make sure that it was, was um, exactly what we wanted the children to be able to see. More so on my children, I do read a bit to them, but more so to my husband, like, what do you think this sounds like? Or, as I said, with Tummy Holes, I did a lot more work with my editor, a bit of to and fro um, with that. No More Kisses, there wasn't too much work on that. It was more um, more gr grammar and, and that kind of thing. But, yeah, No, no More Kisses, we did a lot more to and fro on which, which words would work better. Depending on who I suppose you go with, um, Little Steps that I'm with have a bank of pub, um, illustrators, some that are work full time for them, but a lot of them that are, are, are freelancers, so they have normal jobs every day. Um, they give you an option just to have a look, go, go through all the portfolios that are on there for some of the other books that they've done. Um, I think you kind of know what type of illustrations will work for your book. There's so many different ways. There's digital, there's, you know, there's painting, there's hand drawing, all those kinds of things. Um, so we sort of nutted it down to like three or four and then my publishing, um, my editor um, would contact those, the people that we liked and see if they, A, were, bu were busy or weren't and B, if they wanted the project. So that's how we got Angel and how we got Olivia as well. It's 
pretty amazing like to see it in book form so you know you do the writing for, like you do the writing first and the editor's like yep I'm happy with that and then they pass that on to the illustrator and then you you're chatting with them and doing illustration briefs with them and then when they're finished they pass that on to then the book designer and they then put you know decide on um, the text the font the color where it's going to be so there's so many people involved so along the way you're seeing it all happen but until it's in your hand until you can you know really hold it and flip the pages um yeah it's a pretty special moment when when they come home you come home and they're at the post and you get to read it for the first time you, you still don't really think they're they're yours but um yeah, it's it, lots of people have been a part of the process and um, yeah, it's pretty amazing. Oh, not really. I just, I never really thought I would do writing, you know. I just read so many books, especially as a teacher and, and particularly my last couple of years teaching prep. I just read so many stories and I, um, I did... English literature um, at high school and also did it as majored it in it at university so and I read all the time so I've always loved reading I just there wasn't anyone that I just went oh that they're so great because I love them all and I, what I love about them is they're all different there's not one book really that are the same you know so um, I just thought and they all tell a different story some are really long and some are complicated yet some are so simple like some literally have four sentences in the whole book you know I more so I think I love how the writing and the book the words the pictures sorry work together to create this this story like it's not just it might might be just might be my words but then it takes Olivia or Angel to bring it to life and then and then everyone that reads it gets something out, different out of it again. So, no, I don't think there was one, not one in particular. I just think, I just love books and I love reading. Oh, picture storybooks in particular are really important because there's an inter intimacy to it. There's a, they're supposed to be written in a way that whoever's re write, reading them to them, you can have a conversation about something. You know, there are books out there that will talk about things that kids might not want to talk about or feelings or, you know, things that are upsetting. And so I like that whatever's going on in anyone's life, you can use a book to help get through it you know negative or positive um i just like that you know they're funny and they're fun and they're they're they take as a grown-up they take you away too so it's something that if they learn to love when they're little it won't become a chore it'll just be a joy you know and i know as grown-ups we it's if we've got spare time a lot of people it's they'll read you know so um it's yeah but I think children's storybooks are very, very precious because it's the time that they're spending with the people that are reading it to them. So there's a lot in that. I, I have been, I've started two books during COVID. It's been, yeah, I've had the boys at home. Um, more just about friendships and I think relationships and how important they are and not necessarily, I've just written, I'm writing a book about a, a a little boy's friendship with his dog and how it's just so important to him that other people might not understand it but during COVID like my boys they didn't leave the house we live out of town so the only people they were seeing were the bike riders who were riding fast and they were waving to so relationships on things that we had you know yeah at home um, so yeah I think yeah definitely relationships and who's important to us and and how we connect you know on the different ways that we're able to during covid which is facetime and you know yeah. <laughs> calling yeah. and all those things i tummy holes i did lots of readings i went everywhere i was really lucky and then i had Bo, so i had my second son no more kisses i only um it only came out last year so we were it was about to be the end of the year Christmas come and we were you know ready to hook into a big year and, and then COVID came so that's been a little bit disappointing but I did get out to a few and I was able to do some um, virtual readings um, kids love them they they love things that are funny you know um, they like things I know with tummy holes they like yeah th 
the imagination and, you know, um, some of the older kids can get the, you know, some of the references to like Indiana Jones and those kinds of things. Um, these ones, they think it's hilarious because they've all got their aunties and uncles and nannies and past. So again, they can relate, you know, at that same time, if they're having a giggle, no doubt it's their own family circle and the kissing things that go on. I'm from a Maltese family, so we had lots of people to get in the house and get out of. So um, especially the uncles, you know, that cheek scrape. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, I think them being able to have a react to it themselves and then have a giggle. I know they do, they, the little ones think this is pretty funny, especially the cousins and the dogs. So yeah, and that's, and that's nice. <laughs> oh, I think just having to doing it, it's, it's the, the first time I ever did tummy holes, um, Craig and I were in the caravan over in, we, Clay was quite little. Um, we were travelling for three and a half months and he's like, just send it in. And they're like, stories are like your babies. Like you're actually, you know, you're worried that someone might not like it. But I listened to a lot of podcasts and, and a lot of authors and, and that. And, you know, I think being resilient and listening to so many very established authors who got knocked back time again and time again, um, that's been liberating more than anything because you just go well they got knocked back too so you know life's for living you've got to give it a go so I think sending off finding the publishing firm that suits your book there's so many out there and they all um, tailor to different and specific genres and age groups and stuff and and then um, they've all got such a high criteria and different criteria on when to send to send your manuscript in and um, there's a waiting game you've got to wait like four months and maybe you won't hear back from them and that might mean that they don't like it so yeah I, the whole sending it in and waiting I think is is hard and and it's the same with each book like you're not necessarily you do one not necessarily you're going to do another so I think I was more stressed sending off my second one than I was my first one. And I think I was just putting pressure on, on myself. But yeah, so I think it's the, the getting it out there. And then the rest, I think you get better at um, as you go, yeah. Yes, I think it is. And I think that's why people read or that's why people watch, um, you know, Netflix and that. It's, they might not be a reader, but they might really be into a, um, a movie or a mini series it's still story it's still genre they're still following you know um, a, a problem and a resolution and that kind of thing um, so I, I do think there is and you know everyone that's why I think as an adult I want to write books that parents want to read to their kids because it's important for us to also sit and read and 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 have that quiet calm intimate time with our with our kids as well but yeah I, I do think that it is mm. For my boys, Clay and Bo. No more kisses. I'm five now, and that means I'm a big boy. Not a big boy like my brother Jimmy, or a big boy like my dad. I'm just a bigger boy than I was yesterday. And this year, I've decided that there will be no more kisses. There will be no more loud all over my face smooches from my mum. No more hair ruffle chicken pecks on the top of my head from dad. No more snotty tongue out head clashes from my baby brother. No more sticky lipstick smack bang on my lips snogs from my grandma. No more rough prickly lip tickles from Pa. No more perfume nuzzles from my aunties. No more back, back slapping cheek scrapes from my uncles. No more catch it in my hand and put it on my heart air kisses from my twin cousins. And no more wet, sloppy, bone breath licks from my dog. No more kisses. 
Never. Ever, 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 ever. No more, no more, no more. No way. Now here there's no, there's no words. So this is where I ask the children if they can help me um, read the rest of the book. And I ask them what's happening and they can say that he's, because of his dad's big shoes, he's fallen over, fallen down the stairs. And then I ask them where does it look like we are and they can tell me that it's a hospital and that he's hurt his leg and that he's not very happy. And I ask them what kinds of things make them feel happy. Lots of them say chocolate, <laughs> lollies, treats. But they all get around to the fact that maybe kisses might help. And so that's what helps Sam. His baby brother, nanny and pa, his aunties, his uncles, his twin cousins, and even his dog. And then I ask them, does he look happy now? And they say yes. I'm five now and I've decided that there will be no more kisses next year when I turn six. So he's going to hang on to them for one more year. Yeah.